arguably the most picturesque city in America, Washington, D.C. It's West Virginia, Georgetown, McDonough Arena is our venue with my partner, Steve Lavin. I am Eric Collins. Let's take a look at our Jeep Grand Cherokee starting lineup. And we start with the visitors from West Virginia, the Mountaineers. They've got the Eminem boys, McBride, Matthews, and McNeil, sandwiched around that powerful front wall of Culver and Sheebway. For Georgetown, Kudis Wahab, Jalen Harris, Donald Carey, and then the veterans, Blair and Pickett. All right, let's do it. Both teams ready to play some basketball, both coming off of losses. West Virginia lost on Wednesday against Gonzaga. No shame in that. Georgetown losing last time out on Tuesday against the Navy midshipmen. Tap is won by Georgetown. Apologize, tap is won by West Virginia. That'll be my first and only mistake. Emmett Matthews travels along the baseline, and it's Georgetown basketball. There's Bob Huggins, 13th year in his alma mater. 884 total wins, 294th, uh, 294 of them at West Virginia. Well, what's so impressive is he's done well, exceedingly well in so many different conferences. Uh, we'll get into that later, but um, it shows his ability to have that winning blueprint and to adjust to his personnel. Interior pass. Wahab takes his time, spins it through. Touch for the big man. And we're underway with the first basket of the game. And a good sign that Georgetown looking to go down low, play inside out, get the high percentage looks, give yourself the chance to get fouled along the way. Culver, contested catch on the block. Big fellow with the left hand. One and done, rebounded by Pickett. Nobody stopped the ball. And Pickett makes the Mountaineers pay. Yeah, that's rare. In transition, the Mountaineers break down defensively. Got to stop the ball in transition defense. But that's what Pickett gives you. He can rebound, push with that length, and shoot over the top. Shibwe. And another rip point. That's the second turnover for West Virginia. Jalen Harris to steal. Skip pass. Pickett made one a moment ago. This time, a little bit shy. McBride is fouled on his foray to the cup. Now Georgetown, led by an alum, Patrick Ewing. Big Patrick now in his fourth year in his alma mater class of 1985. Of course, won a national title as a player back in 1984. What a special, special athlete and human being Patrick Ewing is. Yeah, Hall of Famer and 15 years as an assistant coach in the NBA working on the craft of coaching and teaching. And we've seen that pay dividends in his approach with the Hoyas. Uh, outstanding mentor and, of course, no one better in terms of tutelage for frontline players oh. than Patrick Ewing. If you're 6'10 or higher and you want to learn how to play the game at a high level, you sign up to go to Georgetown. Have to retool this year. And Coach Ewing will have to be an alchemist to us in terms of tinkering with the new pieces and trying to develop chemistry and have this team gel as the season goes along. Harris gets in the paint, a little too strong, spins out. Offensive rebound. Maybe a story today. Both teams are very good rebounding clubs. Foul is called on Derek Culver. Seeing Georgetown here aggressive with their straight line drives, dribble penetration, trying to pick up fouls as they attack the Mountaineers' feet. Out of bounds, play up and through. How about that for a lefty fading away jumper? And good execution. Surprising West Virginia here out of the gate, not playing with the tenacity that we've come to expect out of Bob Huggins' teams. High low, Sheepway. One and done, rebound in traffic by Pickett. Georgetown the lead in the ball, up by six. Wahab. Emmett Matthews the rebound. West Virginia, they're only two points. Almost three minutes into the game were free throws by McBride. 
Georgetown's length, a, a real asset. Miles McBride, he's got all five now for West Virginia. Uh, orchestrates, runs things for the Mountaineers, but also capable, shooting 36% from long range coming in to this evening's contest. Harris hands it off to Blair. Donald Carey, deep three. Trying to run the floor and get ahead was Sheepway, and the ball is lost out of bounds. Good hustle by Georgetown to get back. Yeah, running with the appropriate sense of urgency, back down the floor, tracking that ball, providing the help, forces the turnover. Three and a half minutes into this one. West Virginia, of course, formerly of the Big East. They have a lot of history with Georgetown, a charter member of the Big East Conference. And careless turnover. Really unprovoked. Matthews up and through, and here come the Mountaineers. Good work there by Matthews in the open court to slow down, let the defender run through, and create the space for the easy layup. Looks to the bench for instruction. Four minutes into this one. Lefty three, Blair. Ryan's always in attack mode. Yeah, he's been aggressive here from the outset. Good turn down here to try and get a better shot. Wow, whirling dervish. Georgetown in a hurry. And a turnover again. It's McBride streaking down the floor. Matthews, this layup is good. A pretty basketball in the open court by the Mountaineers. Sharing the sugar here early. Defense creating offense. A little give and go in the open court. Nice left. Timeout. The visitors from Morgantown leading Georgetown 9 to 8, 15, 20 remaining in our first half. Now, West Virginia, they have been really good so far this season in limiting opponents' three point looks and makes. Yeah, those defensive numbers impressive for this early in the season, basically holding opponents, as you said, to 25% from long range. And that's because of their ball pressure, a smothering, aggressive perimeter defense. And when you're Bob Huggins, you don't mind if on occasion a player on the perimeter gets beaten off the bounce because you've got those bigs down low to provide the resistance. And you take a look here early. The Hoyas, two for five, uh, moving the ball well and playing inside out, uh, which is preferable to just coming down and launching shots before you've explored the paint or the inside. Gabo Zaboyan in the game for West Virginia. He replaced Derek Culver a moment ago for the first substitution of the game by West Virginia. Mountaineers have already played four games. Georgetown just a pair. Georgetown also showing some discipline defensively. Only one personal foul. Kudus Wahab, second field goal. And you can see Wahab's confidence with each game uh, continue to develop. And again, going back to that tutelage of the personal instruction from a Hall of Famer and Patrick Ewing. How about that? Point guard McBride down in the block. Nice. A little dream shake right there. Fake left goes right. And the Mountaineers will do that. They'll invert and post up their guards. Uh, they want to attack the basket, attack the paint in any manner they can. They'll do it in different ways. Posting up the bigs, inverting the guards, and then getting on the glass for second shots. Wahab sets the screen. Extra pass. Pick it. His second three-pointer. Georgetown now has three of them. Here in the early going. Well, that was textbook offensive basketball there. Good turn down by Javon Blair off the penetration. Quick ball move at the hockey assist to a wide open three. Chief way to misfire. Blair. And now Harris will reset. Wahab turns and draws contact. Sheepway got him. Yeah, Georgetown showing 
better discipline offensively, a nice mix of transition, exploring the paint as they do once again down low with Wahab. Not able to fully get squared, but able to pick up the foul. The block uh, to Shibwe. And that's what's also important about going inside is you put your opponents in foul jeopardy. And you get closer to the bonus and eventually the double bonus. And you get deeper into opponent's bench by creating that foul trouble. So explore the post, the inside first, before launching the long ones. Culver comes back into the game for West Virginia. Shibwe sits. Patrick Ewing talked to him a couple of days, so he says the Kudus Wahab will be good. And Patrick Ewing. If anyone would know. He gives you a compliment as a low post player. That carries weight. Like a Jedi, master teacher. Culver back into the game in attack mode. Score it and a foul. Right, so comfortable on his post catches. Carves out space well. Nice back down dribble. Feels the pressure. Able to rip through. Blair stab at the ball there and finish in traffic. What a career. Just a junior, but Derek Culver, 11-9 his freshman year, 12-8 his sophomore year, and this year, 15-11. 15, 15 points, 11 rebounds per ball game. That is some big-time productivity. And efficient on his catches. Doesn't have to be a high-volume shooter to put up big numbers. Georgetown still playing with his starting five. And that's by design. Their bench really struggled last game out. Just one point total for bench players in a loss against Navy. Well, and that's a good adjustment. If you can stay out of foul trouble and play a group and develop cohesiveness and some chemistry, uh, like musicians getting to play together more frequently, uh, the basketball will improve on the floor. So Derek Culver called for that foul. I believe, if so, that's the second foul on Culver. Keep an eye on that. It's Georgetown basketball once again. Yeah, that's foul number two on Culver. Well, now if you're Georgetown, you want to capitalize, not force, but continue to explore the interior with Culver on the bench. And you hope to extend. Wow. Nice two-man game. Ball is fumbled away by Wahab. McBride keeps the dribble alive and now resets the offense. Good judgment there by McBride to get the ball out, get organized. This is Taz Sherman just checked into the game. He finds the cutting Emmett Matthews, and Matthews is whacked. Good cut. There by Matthews to help a player make a second play by cutting to an opening and able to pick up the foul as a result. Get yourself to the free throw line. That's the second foul on Wahab. Let's see if Patrick Ewing goes to his bench. Yeah, have to. Timothy Ego Efe comes into the game. And Wahab leaves with two personal fouls and five points next to his name. West Virginia takes the lead. See the Mountaineers picking up their ball pressure here a bit. Went under the screen. rebound picket. I like the two-man game at the top of the floor. Gary! Oh, now the ears go under again on the ball screen and carry with daylight. Airspace makes them pay. Big difference in the game. Georgetown has already made four three-pointers. West Virginia's only attempted one. Making two. That one's off the mark by Matthews. Boy, is 
the lead in the ball. Up the pair. Blair into the paint. Good hands. That stopped what would have been a chin up by Igo Efe. This is the Gary. Why not? Lock and load. Bottoms. The schools, back when they were both in the Big East 2010 Championship Final One by just two points by West Virginia. Deshaun Butler was dynamite. Two game winners in three days. First Big East Championship for West Virginia in that season. Bob Huggins. 31 wins with West Virginia, the most wins ever in his illustrious coaching career. Yeah, with Deshaun Butler, the MVP of the Big East Tournament, a two-time first-team all-conference player. Hughes won the regular season that year in the Big East, uh, but West Virginia caught fire. They go to the Final Four, but Deshaun Butler gets injured, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. And that derails their hopes of a national championship. What a special season. Kevin Jones was the second leading scorer in that team. Just Kevin a Eubanks. sophomore. Yep. Eubanks as well. 12 and 8 that year, if I'm not mistaken. Almost a double double man. Only a sophomore. Oscar Shibway. Foul trouble early. Couple of fouls. Maybe they took one away from him. Look at the box score. It says he's only got one. We'll get to the bottom of that. Derek Culver does have two fouls. And Culver remains on the bench. McBride, pump big. Up and through. Miles McBride, Big 12 All-Freshman team a year ago. Better and better here in his sophomore season. Yeah, so comfortable. Off the bounce. Able to separate from defenders to create his own shot effectively. Has floor, excellent floor vision as well in terms of distributing the ball to his teammates. And a foul. Donald Carey along the baseline was cut off. And somehow, <laughs> Gabe Osaboyan is incredulous. Yeah, Carey's been aggressive as we look at it one more time. Of course, coast to coast. Officiating, emphasis, freedom of movement, benefit of the doubt goes to the offensive player. So carry to the free throw line. That's his first free throw of the season. Carry two games without a free throw attempt. Sheepway back into the game. We want to clarify that. He only has one foul. So one foul for Sheepway. There is two fouls on Derek Culver. <laughs> Carry one of the three graduate transfers on this Georgetown roster. Came over from Siena. Got a lot of minutes, a lot of games under his belt. And that's one way to offset the loss of a McClung and a Kinjo uh, who transferred last season from Georgetown. Uh, you've got to be able to reload in a hurry. So the transfer market, the grad transfer market, is one way to build your roster after it's been depleted. As Sherman kind of kicked his legs out and got contact, and because of it, he'll have free throws. Crafty play, Taz Sherman, senior from Missouri City, Texas. So he'll go to the free throw line where he has been perfect this season. Seven for seven at the line. An instant offense. When Taz Sherman checks into the game, he shoots 57% coming into tonight from the three-point line. And we saw there aggressive off the bounce in terms of getting to the mid-range. First miss of the campaign. Free throw line is now eight out of nine. And hitting the deck, Chudier Bile. Early playing time for Bile. Grad transfer from Northwestern State. Only played in one of the first two games for Georgetown. We're seeing the trend uh, for the Hoyas. Clearly, a point of emphasis is attacking, continuing to explore, dribble drive to the paint, and not just settling for long shots. Dante Harris working against Jordan McCabe. Long two. And it's West Virginia basketball. Offense has slowed for both sides in recent minutes. Halfway through our first half. 
Isaiah Cottrell. McCabe inside along the baseline. Jordan McCabe, his first deuce. I'm sorry, that's Sean McNeil. You know, good cut by McNeil. From the opposite side of the floor, able to get himself a high percentage look. Tough chance in and out for Igor Ife. Blair. And a foul going for the rebound called against Georgetown. Oh. Nice block shot, but I think there was a little riding. Well, we're German pushing him out of the way. We're at McDonough Arena. Used to be called McDonough Gymnasium. So old school. Big East vibes. Let him play. That's right. Over to McCabe here at McDonough Arena. And McCabe is fouled from behind. That was Dante Harris, little YMCA defense. Got to strip the ball after the ball handler had made his way past. Sixth foul on Georgetown. McNeil. Terrific marksman has it. Shot the ball well to this point in the season. Capable of shooting a higher percentage than he currently is. At just under 30%. But I like the fact his teammates are looking for him. Sherman, again frustrated, didn't get a whistle, but it stays with West Virginia. D3, in and out for McNeil. Another offensive rebound. Walked away. Eagle Essay blocks it away from Sheepway, who can't believe that he was rejected. Ingo Efe has thrown the Mountaineers a bit with his length. Able to fully extend, go straight up, block the shot, and then, equally as important, secure it. You know, the best shot blockers have the ability to tap the ball, keep it in play, and ideally tap it to one of your teammates so you can start the break. Uh, but there he was able to block it and then secure it instead of blocking it into the fifth row, which gives the ball right back to you. Your opponent. Blair, up and under. West Virginia leads by a point. McNeil. McCabe. Jordan McCabe, Jr. from Wisconsin. A nice maneuvering there at the top of the floor using the high ball screen and then finding that stop and pop, that kill spot at the mid-range. And all West Virginia has is late. Shots create long rebounds. It can act as an outlet pass for your opponent. And uh, that's why when you do shoot the long one, you got to make sure you get at least two people back in terms of transition defense. West Virginia played a long time without Derek Culver on the floor. Here comes Georgia. Another long rebound. And now they good strength. Marco pick it back into the game for Georgetown. Pick it. Wow. That's where you're better served to reverse the ball or explore the post first before launching the Rockets. McNeil is fouled. He'll have free throws when we come back. Bob Huggins. He has seen it all. One point game in Georgetown. A slow start for both sides from the field. Combined 15 for 42. Mountaineers 36%. Hoy is 35%. And West Virginia, one of six from long distance. And uh, they haven't shot the ball exceedingly well this year in any of their games. But uh, that's unusually low. 
Now before that, last time out, he had a foul on Sean McNeil, who was cutting to the basket. So McNeil is at the free throw line, where he has been perfect this year. Eight for eight as a free thrower. This is the front end of the one and one. Georgetown down a bucket. One point. Kudus Wahab back into the game for the Hoyas. Shot missed from distance. Offensive rebound, Wahab. If you're not going to make your shot, you might as well get the offensive rebound. Georgetown's been good at that. And a foul. The seventh called on West Virginia. And now the Hoyas are in the bonus. Let's go, guys. One and one. Nice feed there by Jalen Harris, the transfer from Arkansas. Interesting, the Mountaineers continue to go under on the ball screen action of Georgetown. So uh, what that informs you is they don't think consistently over the course of the game that they can knock down shots uh, and not allowing them to turn the corner, therefore going under, leveling off dribble penetration. But it was a good maneuver by Harris to reverse pivot. Offensive oh, rebound, score the goal and a foul. Bile, give him two, maybe three. Well, there's that free throw step, and we saw it in the Marquette-Wisconsin game. On the free throw check, free throw box out. You can't get pinned under the basket area because now when the shot comes off, the offensive player has the advantage, and there we go once again. Got a pinch down, box out, carve out space. If that shot had gone for Pickett, that would have been a six-point possession for Georgetown. The power of the offensive rebound. Derek Culver back into the game for West Virginia. Playing with two fouls. Catch and shoot McCabe. Bottom of the well. On McCabe, feeling it. He had a whole bunch of nothing coming into this game. 0 for 5 in the first four games. That's ancient history. Now a rebound for McCabe. Quickly the other way. McBride. Bile. Oh, Yikes. It's our first UFO of the evening in D.C. McCabe, Cottrell, relocates. Boy is down a point. Lost their last time out. That was Tuesday against Navy. Patrick Ewing said Navy's a good club. They could beat a lot of teams this year. Oh, Navy with a deliberate. What a pass. And Bile missed inside. He'd like a do-over. Yeah, Navy with that deliberate style, takes care of the basketball, makes teams defend it late into the shot clock, and earn themselves a W. And Coach Ewing is upset the fact that Navy, they outscored Georgetown in the paint 40 to 24. Wide margin. Shot clock is down to six. Cottrell. Both these teams with the green light. And keep in mind, it is early. Uh, you know, every team in the country, with the exception of maybe four or five at the top in terms of the rankings, are works in progress. And the teams that have an advantage are the veteran teams that return, you know, a number of starters or the majority of minutes returned because they're obviously ahead of the teams that are in transition, uh, like Georgetown. One and one. One and one. Free throw opportunity. One and one. This is Bile. Missed a free throw just a moment ago. Yeah, Georgetown all of a sudden misfiring at the line. You're four for eight as a team at the free throw line. That'll hurt you. McCabe. Javon Blair back into the game. Blair probes, finds a hole, and scores. The senior with the left hand. Yeah, Blair again maneuvering off the bounce but under control. 
A little change of pace, a hesitation dribble, and the blow by for the Deuce. Gone back and forth for a while now. Underneath four minutes to play first half. Lefty three missed by Emmett Matthews. And a tie up. Blair orchestrating. Working off the bounce, through the legs. The high ball screen, a little hesitation. Time out. Best one college hoop sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Jeep, there's only one. One point lead for Georgetown. And maybe it uh, should be a little bit higher when you consider the fact that Georgetown is holding the Mountaineers to absolutely zero second chance points. Yeah, give credit to the Hoyas for checking West Virginia on the boards. And that is highly unusual this deep into the first half to see West Virginia without any putbacks. That's been a hallmark through Coach Huggins' career. You go back to Akron, to Cincinnati, to Kansas State, here at West Virginia. Uh, his teams have always prided themselves in that tenacious, aggressive style, not only defense, but rebounding the ball and getting second shots. 3.39 remaining in our first half. Georgetown has the lead and the ball. Von Blair crosses the timeline. Bounce pass over to Wahab. Jalen Harris. Dangerous pass. Harris gets it back. Contested rebound, Osaboyan. Yeah, good possession there by Georgetown. The shot didn't go down, but uh, if you're Coach Ewan, you'll live with that. If you do that frequently enough, duplicate that, you'll get enough good looks over the course of a game or season. West Virginia continues to play without both Shibwe and Culver, two of their pillars. Three-point basket yet again. Georgetown riding Javon Blair. They've made five first-half three-pointers. Yeah, and Blair picking his spots. Been very surgical in terms of combining excellent playmaking with shot-making. Uh, good judgments on display as he's the central nervous system of this team orchestrating matters. And here, just sizes one up. And again, West Virginia late on their closeouts. Too much airspace. And in transition, uh, that's what Georgetown will do to you. On the other side, Georgetown commits the foul, and that puts West Virginia at the free throw line. Still in the single bonus, not the double bonus. So this is a one and one. Jalen Bridges misfires, so a missed opportunity for Chiefies with Mountaineers. Harris. Bile. They bribe the other way. to like for this McBride guy. He really controls the action. And he's got some good offense, too, when he chooses to call his own number. Without a doubt, he's shown good judgments as well of shot-making and play-making. Shot clock's down to five. Off balance. Shot is missed by Sherman. Offensive rebound, Matthews. Well, fresh clock. You're seeing West Virginia more patient. Probing, investigating, and interior look on these last possessions here offensively. McBride quicker than a hiccup. Works that baseline, and he sets up Bridges beautifully. Give him three. Yeah, playing in pairs there, McBride and Bridges, and rewarded by making good judgments. Uh, the ball got from one side of the floor to the other. It was taken into the paint. Draw help. Now you kick it, you get better looks from the perimeter. First foul on McBride, and we'll have free throws for Georgetown. Coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, Player of the Year conversation. Very early, but why not? First half stats and analysis. Uh, Luca Garza's likely oh, to be on man. their list. He's on the ballot, putting up staggering numbers. Jalen Suggs. You have multiple players with the Zags out west. Uh, they are loaded and appear to be the odds-on favorite 
uh, not only just in terms of what they bring back and firepower, but from an optics standpoint, uh, they're just hitting on all cylinders and playing in such a cohesive manner. Now, since we had West Virginia at a big club, you and I had a chance to see uh, Oklahoma State's Kate Cunningham a couple of days ago. Maybe not huge numbers just yet, but talk about talent. Wow. Uh, when it's all said and done, he's going to have a lot of people talking about him. And a foul as Tash Sherman lands on his wallet. He'll go to the free throw line. Good take, straight line drive, and rewarded with the foul call. So now two free throws for Sherman. Eight out of nine at the line on the year. Boy, what a release. The rotation. Coach, we haven't seen much of what we expected out of Bob Huggins in West Virginia. We thought it was going to be all Derek Culver. We thought it was going to be all Oscar Sheepway. But both men, for the most part, have been confined to the bench. Well, and credit the front line of Georgetown. Uh, their length and size has confounded the front line of West Virginia. Uh, and then you throw in some foul trouble. Coach Huggins searching here a bit to find the right combination. Going a little smaller with this unit. Harris whips a pass. Deflected. File. Walled off. Offensive foul. Good job by Osip Boyan to hold his water. Well, the blow by by Bile, and that helped defense uh, in pos position to take it on the chest. Painful charge drawn by Gabe Osaboyan, senior from Toronto, Ontario. Transfer from Arkansas. Under a minute to play in our first half. If West Virginia can regain the lead, we will have had 11 lead changes in our first half. I like this West Virginia offensive unit here. Kind of a positionless team. Good look inside. Just not able to pick up the foul. Didn't really get his balance. Didn't get his legs under him. And that's where the shot, whether it's a jumper, a hook, a free throw, starts from the floor, from the feet and the legs. Difference game clock and shot clock. It's about three seconds. Jalen Harris up high. Now starts the offense. Georgetown, but he left some time on the clock, and Miles McBride exploits. West Virginia slow on the closeouts, and Bile just lines one up, tickles the twine from distance, and what an impressive push the other way by Miles McBride, showing his roadrunner beep beep speed to go coast to coast. Out of Cincinnati's Moeller High School. He's got a long way to go. If everyone wants to be the best athlete out of Cincinnati Moeller. You got Barry Larkin. You got King Griffey Jr. Actually, on his high school team, he played with Jackson Hayes, now in the NBA. Great athletic school down in Cincinnati is Moeller High. And that will do it for our first half of play in Washington, D.C. Patrick Ewing is Georgetown Hoyas with a two-point stiff arm on West Virginia. Our score at the break, Georgetown 34, West Virginia 32. By Jeep Grand Cherokee Jeep, there's only one. We're in Washington, D.C. where the homestanding Georgetown Hoyas enjoy a two-point lead over West Virginia. Steve Lavin, let's take a look at our first half highlights. Well, Eric, Javon Blair feeling comfortable, as are the Hoyas. Uh, offensively, in particular, from behind the three-point line, they were 6 of 18, very productive from long distance. And, wow, Miles McBride, the smooth sophomore, really carrying the load. 11 points, four rebounds, three assists. And uh, with the quiet night of the Mountaineers' big men, uh, it's been critical that he stepped up. Take a look at our first half stat sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Well, we see the rebound numbers there. 
26 for Georgetown. That's plus five over West Virginia. Uh, the foul trouble, clearly something that needs to be addressed uh, because you need minutes. And the big fellas don't do you any good when they're sitting on your bench next to you, uh, the equivalent of an assistant coach. We thought that this was going to be a huge part of the game, what they would do on the floor. But the fact that they haven't been on the floor, Culver and Chibwe, uh, has been significant. You take a look at the minutes, a combined 13. Uh, Sheepway and Culver actually have more combined fouls than they have points or rebounds. Been an odd start to the game for the Big 12's West Virginia Mountaineers, but they're only down a pair, so they still have a puncher's chance, no doubt about that. They would have liked to have been a guest visitor or fly on the wall to hear Coach Huggins' halftime oh. talk. I would imagine some emphatic words in terms of Defense, ball pressure, rebounding, um, and getting back to performing as he prefers his teams to play. Bob Huggins, coach of the year in five different Division I conferences. That's cool. Ohio Valley Conference back when he was at Akron. The Metro Great Midwest in Conference USA when he was at Cincinnati. Big 12 coach of the year, not at West Virginia, but during his one season at Kansas State. Yeah, a Hall of Fame coach. And I really appreciate the history and the background there of the like Wikipedia <laughs> resume of Coach Huggins. But uh, he is one of my favorite people in all the college basketball, uh, one of the true Mohicans. I refer to him as the Robert Mitchum of college basketball. Robert Mitchum. Huh? A, a rugged individualist. And uh, his teams are really an extension, a reflection of his personality, his tenaciousness, an excellent teacher and coach, and surprisingly, a great sense of humor. Uh, oh, yeah. People see his sideline demeanor, similar to Gene Cady, uh, who coached at Purdue, and that game time, you know, scowl, uh, really misleading because Coach Huggs has a big heart. And whenever we get a chance to meet Bob Huggins, I'm always a little terrified that he's going to flash into me. But he's a funny guy, tons of personality, very engaging. You can understand why he's such probably a great recruiter when he gets into a home. Yeah, and young people respond to his authenticity. Uh, that's why he can coach them hard, because they know and trust him. And they know that he has their best interest at heart long term beyond basketball. And uh, anytime you go to an event, a fundraiser uh, of Coach Huggins, uh, the former players, uh, the former assistant coaches, and uh, it's because of that realness and authenticity, uh, tough love. Well, he starts his second half by calling a play and getting the ball to Derek Culver. He didn't do much of anything in the first half, so Culver starts with the ball, gets fouled, makes one out of two, and now Georgetown's first touch of the second half. Tough chance right at the shin of Wahab. Georgetown fortunate to keep the basketball. Wow. Some precarious passing here on this possession by Georgetown, but fortuitous as Blair picks up from where he left off in the first half. And good ball reversal there. Alertness by Georgetown on that skip pass opposite. Georgetown now with seven made three-pointers. When you get to that number against West Virginia, you're doing something. Bodies on the floor. West Virginia can't capitalize. You see West Virginia continue to try and look inside. There's the high-low over the top, well executed. That's what we thought. Sheepway finds Culver. Nice pass there by to Sheepway. So clearly coming out of the locker room, the instruction of the Mountaineers was to go inside. Wahab misses the turnaround, trying to take advantage of Culver, who's in a bit of foul trouble. And now West Virginia can tie or take the lead. Culver, McBride. McBride led the Mountaineers in points, rebounds, and assists in the first half. With the right hand, no. She went. Offensive rebound. Wonderful stick to it of this. Right at three layups, all high percentage looks going down low, blocking and tackling style by this Mountaineer team here on their first possessions in the second half. Blair. They have to guard that guy. He has now made another three quarter. And he has got 14 points in the ball game. He's got four of the eight made threes for Georgetown. Yeah, more aggressive uh, closeouts, uh, high hand, uh, drive him off that three-point line into the help. 
interesting to note that West Virginia has Taz Sherman starting the second half. Didn't start the game, but he's starting now. Shave Way is fouled, is held as he starts that drive. Yeah, just late, slow closeout by the Mountaineers. And you allow a team to be that comfortable and be able to window shop over the top of your defense to both pass and shoot, uh, you're going to see their offensive numbers go up. Locked away. George South's got the basketball back in a hurry. They lead by three. Oh, my! Right to the right! Jalen Harris! Stealth with Harris. 166 pounds soaking wet. A two-handed chin-up. Georgetown leads by five. High-arcing shot. Offensive rebound. Sherman. Gets his own miss. Puts it through. Well, the smash-mouth approach continues offensively for the Mountaineers. Everything is to the rim. Whether it's a guard posting up, the high-low look, or just a straight feed to the big fella. Klopadapa. And the foul is called. I'm assuming it's on Culver. Well, Jalen Harris getting out in transition. How about it? Woo. Mm. Show me the ups, young fella. That was pretty. So that foul was indeed on Derek Culver. That's a dangerous play. You got two fouls. You try and take a charge inside, you're flipping a coin. So Culver now has three fouls, and Wahab to the stripe. You just get the sense that we're headed for a rock fight finish tonight. Uh, both these teams' physicality, not that they won't take the opportunity threes, they're going to run off their defense, but uh, from here on out, I think both these squads are looking to put it down low, whether it's off penetration, whether it's an offensive rebound or a straight post feed. Timothy Igoefe comes in, replacing Wahab. Gabe Os Osaboyan is in the game. He replaced Derek Culver, sitting with three fouls. on honey there by the Mountaineers. Pass Sherman transition field goal. Once again, a one possession game. Wow, Mountaineers forgot about the transition defense. Coach Huggs. Carry. Coach Huggs will not be happy with that possession. Mountaineers short legged it, caught napping in transition. Not getting back with the sense of urgency, scrambling, find the ball, talk, communicate. Sherman. McBride. 13 points. That leads the way for West Virginia. You know, McBride, a smooth operator. And using the dribble there to get to the mid-range. Comfortable on his release, on balance as well. He just separates with an ease uh, from defenders. Blair left alone. Feathery floater for the senior. Feathery indeed. Showing the touch. Off the bounce. Really, all of his skills have been on display. Blair's got 16 to lead both sides. Two men in double figures, Blair and McBride, 16 and 13. Matthews. Chiwe really wanted it on the block, posting up strong, and they just can't get it to him. We've got a timeout on the floor. Blair just torching the nets. He's feeling it. Give me the rock, fellas. Let me go to work. Coach Huggs, he's seen enough. Given the official on the earful. Timeout. The 11th ranked team in the country by five. Yvonne Blair has been the good 60 points for the seniors. Yeah, Blair showing us his arsenal of offensive weapons uh, off the bounce after the hesitation dribble and 
Uh, good pass here across court by Jalen Harris. And uh, Blair just comfortable on these catch-and-shoot opportunities. Has a nice base, a uh, little low center of gravity again. The runner, a little razzle-dazzle and flare for the camera as well. In the zone and efficient. Six of ten from the field overall. Four of six from downtown long range. So impressive. And he's played under control as well um, in terms of his decision making. Four-year player for Georgetown, but really never a full-time starter. Only 14 starts first three seasons for Blair. Obviously, that's going to change this year as a senior and one of the leaders offensively. Shibwe left alone. Doesn't even think about taking a shot. McBride. Offensive rebound. Matthews blocked away and a foul. Well, again, the Mountaineers, a concerted effort to attack the rim, to get on the glass, get themselves second shots. And this is just another example of the Mountaineers' collective mindset to get back to being more physical, bringing the fight here in the second half. Matthews, Jr. from Tacoma, Washington. Veteran player, starter a year ago. Bile into the game for the first time here in the second half. There's a good look at Emmett Matthews. Ooh, ah, I think that was going to be Georgetown ball, but for some reason, Igo Efe chased after it and was out of bounds when he touched it. Yeah, another example of early in the season, still needing to work on your checking. Check down on free throws, pinch. The opponent at the foul line, carve out some space, put a body, uh, some lumber on someone on those free throw box out situations. McNeil started the game, didn't start the second half though, now back on the floor, misses the jump shot. Carey. The Mountaineers here extend their pressure defensively. Likes this matchup with McNeil. Squeezes inside. Offensive rebound. Big OFA blocked away by Shibwe. And it is Georgetown basketball. To Shibwe. Looks like he got that one first. Blair walled off. Georgetown works it around the perimeter. Now the ball stops with Harris. Could have been up and down. No whistle. And Georgetown makes it count. Igo Efe. Igo Efe. Uh oh. With the good hands, too. The flop not rewarded, and it costs Georgetown. Miles McBride a three. Well, don't leave McBride open. Stay attached to him. There's. I don't know what Harris is doing. Lost it again. McBride heads up with the steal. How about the dime? Five quickies for West Virginia. And Patrick Ewing needs to call a timeout. Oh, what a disastrous last 30 seconds for the Georgetown Hoyas. Oh, McBride. How about this? The pocket pass. Tashibwe with the chin up. Timeout. Eric, a big sequence here as we take a look at McBride off the bounce, able to get a good look because of Jalen Harris trying to flop, pick up that foul, and then Harris turns it over. And take a look at the intelligence on the move here by Miles McBride, slowing down to allow Tashibwe to separate from his defender. Instead of over-penetrating, collapsing the good spacing in tight quarters, he uses the chatter feet, gets low like a crouching tiger, and then just drops the precise dime for the big fella. Uh, spoon feet the zero-footer for Tashibwe. And just like that, a 5-0 run, and West Virginia within a point. 13-10 remaining second half. West Virginia has also done a lot better job of defending without fouling here in the second half. They have just one team foul. Blair picks up his dribble, gets it over to Harris. Harris trying to atone. He's had a rough last 60 seconds. Blair 
rare miss for Blair. Hits the deck, and that means it's an opportunity for West Virginia. Five on four. Open look, McNeil, and he gave it up. Now even strength. Shibwe is fouled by Igo Efe. Again, high-low look. Ball's entered to the elbow of the high post. Emmett Matthews, who immediately looks inside to Tashibwe, who's sealing, pinning, carving out space, trying to get low like a sumo wrestler would, but on the basketball court, uh, given a big target to throw to. Tashibwe, sophomore, high school in Philadelphia, born in the Democratic Republic of Congo, just the second McDonald's All-American to ever sign with West Virginia out of high school. Big time prospect, and you can understand why. 6'9", 260, active. Relentless on the offensive glass. Actually led the country last year in offensive rebounding percentage. Terror. Kudus Wahab back into the game, grabs the rebound for Georgetown. We're tied at 50. It's a 50-50 proposition. A good response by West Virginia coming out of the locker room at halftime. Uh, they clearly have made the adjustment in a collective mindset in terms of their aggressiveness, uh, their ball pressure defensively, and most importantly, uh, the conscious effort on every possession to attack the paint. Coach, when does Bob Huggins go back to Derek Culver? I think, you know, you read the situation. You don't necessarily have a predetermined, premeditated mindset on it. If this group is continuing to play well and extending, uh, then you can go longer. Culver's been limited. Three fouls. She And a reach-in foul called on Jalen Harris, who is incredulous. Thank you. Yeah, that's where officials 90% of the time are going to make this call if you slap down. It may have been a Spalding sandwich, all leather. But when you hack down, uh, that's why ideally you like to dig up at the ball, uh, drop in like a ninja, and dig up at the ball. Uh, again, easier said than done. So she way at the line. One out of two a moment ago. Meatloaf special, now two out of three. Ain't bad. Five points. Oscar Sheepway came in averaging nine points and nine rebounds. Last year averaged 11 and nine as a freshman. Friendly roll makes a pair. West Virginia. Leading by two. 12 minute mark of our second half. Stolen away by McBride. alley Score the goal! Evan Matthews! This McBride kid doing a bit of everything. Boy, excellent orchestrator. Influence of the game at both ends of the court. Harris, oh, that'll quiet things. That had been a 10-0 run for West Virginia. One-point ball game again. And McBride again goes under the screen, which separates himself. Well, he's being coached to do that, I'm assuming. Yep. And, and Georgetown making him pay for it. Get out and run, and you will be rewarded. Emmett Matthews with the flush in transition. Time out. West Virginia now playing from out front, 54-53, a one-point advantage. 11-21 remaining in our second half. And... Uh, Coach Lab, we're going to give you an opportunity to delve into those numbers. Well, we've had a punch, counter punch. You know, first half, clearly Georgetown was the aggressor. Coming out of halftime, West Virginia has counter punched, and we're seeing it by the production in points in the paint, uh, the aggressive ball press pressure, and turning Georgetown over, leading to those points off of turnovers, and then getting on the glass for second chance opportunities. And that's been the winning for formula for Coach Huggs throughout his career at every stop. McBride was fouled right before that last time out. He's at the line. And he misses the front end. Interesting to note, that was Georgetown's 17th foul of the half. West Virginia just won 
pass in tight quarters. It's a turnover. Yeah, and going so fast. Remember we talked earlier about how McBride really slows down and maneuvers at a pace where he can still read the floor, make good judgments and decisions. And there, Jalen Harris just going so fast. And the velocity on that pass to a big man in tight quarters, uh, the odds of it being caught are one in a zillion. West Virginia gives it right back. Here's Jalen Harris, grad transfer from Arkansas. Grew up in Wilson, North Carolina. You know, and it takes a while to get acclimated to a new system, in particular in a season like this, unprecedented with the pandemic and the loss of practice time, exhibition games, your scrimmages on a daily basis and practices. Wahab double teamed. Somehow able to keep his pivot foot down, and he draws a foul. Just the second team foul on West Virginia here in the second. I make it third team foul on West Virginia. Now West Virginia picks up the foul, but this is emblematic of how they played in this second half. Just aggressive, swarming pressure defense. Osa Boyne is going to leave, and that means Derek Culver comes back into the game. Culver has played just eight minutes so far in our ball game. Culver immediately makes his presence felt by grabbing a defensive rebound. That's how you get loose. Now Culver, other end, quick spin, and it's blocked away. Wahab got a finger on it. Carey, bounce pass, blocked from behind, but a foul. Shapeway called for the foul. Nice pass there by Carey. Driving the baseline, runs out of territory, but the presence of mind to drop that dime on the interior. Judy A. Bile, grad transfer, Northwestern State, Louisiana. First free throw of beauty. Biles from Denver, Colorado. All tied. Grad transfer market really is the equivalent of free agency in college basketball. You need to reload or replace players that have moved on or transferred. Got to look for those grad transfers. 650 people entered the transfer portal this past off season. Georgetown a chance to regain the lead. Halfway through our second half. Harris stops, pops, and missed everything. Yeah, we've seen a, a few flying saucers or UFOs tonight. Uh, the air balls. Maybe a window is open somewhere here in McDonough Arena. A strong draft here in the fall coming in, at least at this end of the court now. But again, Harris will learn just to maneuver. Nothing wrong with being aggressive and exploring and taking the ball somewhere. But uh, get your balance. Don't be in a rush. Georgetown continues to play without Jamarco Pickett, who has been saddled with foul trouble. Pickett's got those four personal fouls. He's been on the bench for a while. And Georgetown has missed it. The foul trouble for Pickett has coincided with the run for West Virginia. Actually have... Pick it with the four. You have Wahab with the three. Culver on the other side has got three, but he was been on the bench for a long time back on the floor. Right, and that's an indication that you're in a rock fight and two teams that want to play through the paint. I mean, Patrick Ewing, a legendary Hall of Fame frontline player, and Bob Huggins throughout his coaching career has been about controlling the lane, controlling the paint. Shibwe misses the front end. So Pickett is back into the game. He's going to have to be careful. He's playing with four fouls. We have nine and a half minutes remaining. Now that tells you the confidence that Coach Ewing has in a senior to make good judgments. Hey, Jamarco Pickett back on the floor. Playing with four fouls into three. Yeah, have a hunch. Bet a bunch. And if you trust a senior and you... Emphasize not fouling. There's going to be times in a season you've got to play with four fouls. And the sooner you 
work on that, uh, the more prepared you are for the next opportunity. Another look inside. Culver, friendly roll. Yeah, good draw through there, too. And swoops to the middle, keeps the ball high, and finishes. One point lead for Georgetown. Blair. McBride. McNeil has been so quiet. Uh, struggling a little bit with his confidence, become gun shy. Uh, shooting under 30% from long range. He's had a couple that were halfway down and popped out. And that'll happen during a slump. That's what we expected to see. High, low, big to big. Culver finds Shibwe. And West Virginia back on top. Yeah, the smash mouth approach. Uh, put it down low to your bigs. Let them go to work. Let the big dogs eat. 13 lead changes, six ties. Dante Harris, Snow, and Sheepway can't kick the rebound in his mitt. We've gone under the eight minute mark here in our second half. Pickett, feeling it. A little separation. The rainbow. How about this high low clinic textbook basketball to Sheepway? Well, again, uh, the aggressiveness of West Virginia here in the second half. They have, you know, started to control the lane. And it's old school in its approach. Here's your reset. Uh, possession arrow favors the home standing Georgetown Hoyas. One point game that could be an issue. And the foul trouble. Remember, Georgetown, they fouled a whole bunch to begin the second half. West Virginia has been in the bonus for a while. West Virginia hasn't fouled as much. And Georgetown still hoping to get to the bonus while it's still useful. Georgetown 10 of 24 from the three-point line. Uh, that's been what's kept them in this game. Blair, he's got 16 points. Top of the key. Offensive rebound. Dante Harris. And score the goal. Or was the foul on the floor? Ego Efe got the flush with the foul. Well, nice dribble penetration. Dante Harris with the give up. Little no look in tight quarters. So give the basket to Georgetown on the continuation and a chance for a three point play. Ego Efe was lucky that the officials looked the other way when he did that chin up. Three-point play. And the hope, the judgment on uh, not calling that is the potential of someone being underneath you. In that case, there wasn't. But you don't know what's behind you. And the instincts are to protect yourself so you don't get injured. West Virginia, who had come storming back, now down a pair. McNeil looking for some confidence. A contested shot, and he's whacked on the wrist. Dante Harris got him, so McNeil, a really good free thrower, goes to the strike. Yeah, and that's an example where Harris has to learn better defensive discipline. Uh, he's playing hard, he's bringing activity and energy, but within it, there also has to be the purpose and the discipline. Don't foul a jump shooter, don't bail out a jump shooter when uh, he's under duress. And on the flip side, uh, important that McNeil sees the ball go through the net on these free throws. Uh, that's a way to work your way out of a slump uh, when you hear that sound of the ball ripping the cords. Uh, come back to him on the next possession. Don't force it, but play through him. Keep him involved and feeling good about himself coming off those two free throws. Tied at 60. Closing in on the seven-minute mark of our second half. Blair walled off by McBride. Loose. Oh, look at McBride. That's a winning type of play. Eight seconds to shoot for Georgetown. McBride won't let Blair get anywhere. Oh, my. And a travel is forced. Well, that is McBride earning a scholarship on that possession. Well, that is the ball smothering, ball hawking defense that Bob Huggins loves. And then to give up the body, fully extended on that dive on the floor, then staying down, fully extended, presence of mind to not foul. 
and able to force that travel. Uh, so a complete reversal of what we were just talking about the other end of the floor in terms of not having the defensive discipline as the clock is winding down. Don't bail out an opponent by fouling a jump shooter. Solid game as per usual for McBride. 16 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, and 1 cut lip. Well, he does it in so many ways. Uh, influences the game positively here. Driving the ball in the pull-up with such ease. Uh, there's a fluidity to his game. Good judgment, not in a rush. Sees the opening and knocks one down. Good hands here. The vice grips, rips it away. I love the slowdown at the free throw line, allowing separation of your big for the spoon feed. And one more look at him just laying it out. Looked like Pete Rose there diving into third base back in the day. <laughs> Miles McBride is from Cincinnati, but I think Pete Rose is a little bit before his time. True. He'll have to Google it, which is what I always encourage my players to do if I made reference to a player from a previous era because you want to know history right whether it's jazz or politics or anything in the world history is important the origins i'm with you on that well with the cut lip mcbride goes to the bench for the first time in the second half he's replaced by jordan mccabe west virginia trying to steal some minutes here talk about stretch armstrong octopus Tentacles length. Second, second half punch for Emmett Matthews. West Virginia up a pair. Wild shot missed. Offensive rebound. Shot clock doesn't reset. Up and through. Jamarco Pickett. Well, he's the security blanket for Coach Ewing. The continuity. Having a senior with the boys who's made big shots in big situations throughout his career. The game. Gets it over to Sherman. Now Matthews. Culver screaming for it on the block. They can't get it to him. Shot clock is down to six, and a wild pass is deflected out of bounds. Matthews, six foot seven. And then the high flying just stretches it out. Two bounces, give him a cape. Looking like Superman climbing the ladder here. Six seconds to shoot for West Virginia. Culver. Loose picked up by McCabe. Shot clock resets. Trying to break a 62 all time. Sherman, three pointer. Well, you establish the lane. Early in the half. That opens up the perimeter. Uh, similar to football, establishing that run game to complement the pass game. And the pass game complementing the run game. And now you're hitting on all cylinders. But it started with establishing the dominance of the paint. Nice throwback. Sherman with the catch and shoot. Pretty stroke. And that's what he gives you. The instant offense and that aggressive mindset. Uh, the threat of his shot also creates good spacing on the floor for the West Virginia bigs to go to work down low. On the year, Tess Sherman is now 9 for 15, shooting three. I wonder why he hadn't taken more. And a turnover called on Georgetown as Carey fumbles it out of bounds. West Virginia the ball up by three, and Miles McBride back on the floor for the Mountaineers. Yeah, Coach Ewing knows his Hoyas just need to regroup some. Uh, many of the miscues are a result of just going a little too fast. Uh, get a couple touches on the ball. Don't force it. Probe and investigate without forcing on the offensive end. And then get on the glass. No second shots here on defense. Timothy Igo Efe called the foul. On Igo F.A. Well, so he'll be the first player to be dismissed. And 52 remaining in the game. You know, Eric, that's one of the positives we talked about early. Whichever team you are, if you continue to look inside and be aggressive and get paint touches, post feeds, uh, then you get yourself to the foul line more frequently. And you get higher percentage shots and you collapse the defense, which leads to higher looks 
better look to the basket from the three-point line, and you put teams in foul jeopardy in terms of getting deeper into their bench. And all those things give you an advantage in terms of winning games. Kudus Wahab back into the game, replacing Igo Efe, who just fouled out. And Wahab has to be careful as well. He has four personal fouls. Culver. First free throw is true. Bile back into the game for Georgetown. So even just watching the game, can't you sense or feel how in the first half, Georgetown imposed their preferred style of play and their will on West Virginia, and it's been a complete opposite. Uh, now West Virginia is imposing their will on the Hoyas, and so much of sports is right there in a nutshell, the competitive element. West Virginia up by five. Where's the offense going to come from for Georgetown? Blair's been stuck on 16 points for a while. Bad pass picked off by McBride. Another unforced turnover. Carey missed the layup. It's Culver! Offensive rebound and a stick back. And West Virginia flexing their muscle. They now lead by seven. Oh, these are straight weight room shots for West Virginia. The take. The cleanup. Put back on the weak side. Culver. Timeout by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Jeep, there's only one. West Virginia trying to steal a road win in our nation's capital. Well, West Virginia, Eric, on a run. Offensively in sync. They established the post, the lane, controlling high percentage shots, cleanups, second shots. And it's been fueled uh, by a collective mindset to get the ball inside, uh, but also through their pressure defense. Uh, they've turned the Hoyas over. Uh, they now lead 21 to 2, a 19 point advantage on points off turnover. So aggressiveness on defense and aggressiveness on offense here in the second half. That's been the change. Georgetown's turned it over 15 times, just four turnovers for West Virginia. He'll try to work it inside out. Wahab misses the turnaround, and West Virginia has the basketball back. Love the way Miles McBride escorts the ball up the floor quickly. Yikes. McNeil, a quick miss. Yeah, poor judgment there or shot selection. Harris. Missed the layup, got all the way to the 10, and missed the layup. And McBride, who pushed it on the last possession, now using good judgment. Understand time and score. Your team's got a seven-point lead. Too early to put it on ice. Uh, run your sets, get deeper into the clock, and continue to feed the big fellas. Culver blocked away, and a whistle. If it's on Wahab, he's done. <laughs> Little mid post catch for Culver faces up and uses that bounce in an aggressive way to get to the other side of the basket and pick up the foul. It was just blocked out of bounds, so no foul for either side. And what a reverse layup by Taz Sherman. Boy, that mindset for scoring in a variety of ways. Largest lead of the game now. Nine points stiff arm for West Virginia. And it's starting to get late for Georgetown. Pick it. Back of the iron. Well, we're in the midst of a 13-2 run. West Virginia going to walk it up, get organized in their half court and execute. And going back to Georgetown's turnovers, it's the live ball turnovers that kill you because there's no defense for that. Uh, as a team boat races or plays downhills off your miscues. Bile misses his first attempt, gets another one. All right, so that's the first field goal for Georgetown since the 6-10 mark when Pickett hit a three. Screaming the other way in the alley up is missed by Culver. Door still open for Georgetown. This would be big. Blocked away. Culver took it away from Blair. Yeah, and might want to catch your breath by putting some touches in the ball, but Georgetown going to extend their defense, try and trap, force a turnover, and I think West Virginia needed a turnover to catch their breath. This has been such a relentless pace. Out of nowhere, Culver blocks the shot by Blair. It's a seven-point lead for West Virginia. 
traveling into McDonough Arena. And so far, so good. They've got a seven-point lead, 2.13 remaining in our second half. Bob Huggins, West Virginia, only one loss so far in the year. And that was against the top-ranked team of the country, Gonzaga, back on Wednesday. They've tested themselves. Haven't played a home game yet. McBride crosses the timeline over to McNeil. Well, this is where experience such a positive uh, when you look at West Virginia returning four or five starters from the third place team in the Big 12 last year. Hey! Evan Matthews, lefty three, and the lead is 10. Yeah, and well devised coming out of the timeout. Uh, that's what a veteran group does. Executing, understand time and score. Georgetown looking for something. And layup is missed. Follow through by Wahab. The pick is given everything they can. Everything he can. Uh, just not able to finish, but his aggressive move led to the second shot. McBride going to take the air out of the ball. Yeah, they're in a position where they have to foul now. Create more possessions if Georgetown hopes to come back. 16-footer Matthews, no. Good rebound by Culver. How did he snatch that away and score it? That's the Derek Culver we were expecting. And a dagger. Gonna end up with a respectable night. 12 points, 8 rebounds for Culver. Make it 9 rebounds for Culver. He's a caramel away from a double-double after just having a whole bunch of nothing in the first half because of foul trouble. That's what Culver does. Mm. Able to secure the rebound and then gather so comfortable in those jump hooks. Matthews with the catch and shoot dagger. McBride misses the first. It starts you when your point guard misses free throws tail end of a game. Does have a 10-point lead. Another opportunity. One of the better floor leaders uh, that I've seen in college basketball. And it's early in terms of sample size, but uh, this is what he does. Uh, there's an ease of fluidity. His judgments are on point. An extension of the coaching staff on the floor in terms of the intelligence he brings. And he did it at both ends, uh, playing smothering defense on the perimeter as well. There he is with the rebound. We've gone under a half minute to play. And McNeil is fouled in the backcourt. Best free thrower that West Virginia has will go to the line. 11-point lead with 21 seconds remaining. And that looks promising for Bob Huggins and the Mountaineers. But Georgetown held their own in that first half. Uh, impressive. If they can extend that to two halves, sustain that for 40 minutes, uh, they'll be a handful for opponents in the Big East. And this game simulates Big East play. Uh, St. John's plays a style very similar. Uh, they don't have the personnel at this point that Coach Huggins does at West Virginia. Uh, but they'll give you the full court looks, the aggressiveness. The difference is uh, West Virginia anchored by two of the better big men in the country. A little bit of window dressing late. That's the shot along the baseline, Donald Carey. And McNeil thrilled to go back to the free throw line and pad his point total. This is where the game was determined. Uh, in the second half, West Virginia came out just determined to take back control of the paint. And they stepped up their defense in terms of ball pressure, smothering the Hoyas on the perimeter, which led to Georgetown rushing some and uh, having the number of miscues. And then that led to them getting out in transition, boat racing, playing downhill, uh, where they've got the numbers and the athleticism to finish. West Virginia is going to go to four and one. They've got Robert Morris next on Wednesday. Georgetown going to fall below 500 at one and two. Their next game will be against Coppin State on Tuesday. Blair hits a three. Blair has made five three-pointers in the ball game. He's going to finish with 19, but not enough. And that will do it. 
A victory on the road for the West Virginia Mountaineer. Smiles all the way around, even with a bloody lip. Miles McBride, 17 points, 7 rebounds, 7 assists. He was super solid. And West Virginia gets a much-needed W. Sure hope you enjoyed it. From my partner, Steve Lavin, I'm Eric Collins. It's a win on the road for West Virginia on a Sunday afternoon. Ah! Uh...